Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. It's time for five questions. Five is right out. You don't have to answer the question. I'll answer the question. On 1460 WXBR. Thank you for all your cooperation. Welcome back. It's the Sports Blast, 508-588-9927. That's 508-588-WXBR. Remember to check us out online, sportsblast.co. That is sportsblast.co. A lot of good stuff on there, like what? Archived audio, guys? Yeah. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all, all that is above. on sportsblast.co. Check it out. It is time for my favorite segment called Five Questions. Guess who's hosting this one? You. That's right. It's my turn, finally. I'm scared of this, of yeah. this episode of Five Questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so guys, I want to preface my first question by actually playing a piece of sound that I asked Dave. It, he doesn't know what it is, but I'm just going to ask you, Dave, to cue up that sound that I gave you. Uh, you don't have it yet? Oh, he said Don't have it yet. I'm he sorry. Doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't have it yet, but uh, while he's over there, fine. I'll just tell you, and then we can play the sound. So we all know that Mayor Menino actually had another one of his famous sports flubs uh, this past, what was it, yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. He, he said something along the lines of when once Dave gets that up, we can play it. He said, I hope the Red Sox win the World Series Cup, <laughs> which just got me thinking to myself, why does this guy try? Why does he still do this? So my question to you guys is, of all of his sports gaffes in the recent years, which one is your favorite? I gotta go with uh, KJ and Hondo. <laughs> I, he got one uh, abbreviated letter correct, but then messed up on the last one. And he's close, but uh, and then Hondo. I mean, that that's just uh, John Havlicek. Yeah, that's just that's just a, a mess up itself. It, the quote is: "KG is great, but Hondo is really the inspiration. Hondo drives that team." Oh, All right, okay. guys, I got I got that All sound. Right, let's go ahead and right play it. Now. We're gonna play it. Not only rooting hard to bring back. The World, the World Series Cup to Boston, like we did in 2004 and 2007. Oh, so the Red Sox are now playing soccer, it seems. <laughs> World Series Cup, man. Yeah. What about you, Dave? What's your favorite of all time? Uh, it's got to be Grakowski and Wilcock because it was <laughs> definitely the most egregiously offensive. <laughs> you know, with me, I actually have a list here. I'll, before we go on to question two, I just want to read out all of these. You guys already mentioned KJ and Hondo and Wilcott and Weckler. Uh, World Series <laughs> Cup. Uh, Veritex split in the uprights, obviously. Uh, That's a good one, too. I think my favorite, though, other than the Ionic sports moments, you know, we also have covalent sports moments, but <laughs> Donald Stearns. When he yeah. was talking about David Stern, had to be one of my absolute <laughs> favorite ones. So, a now, lot of fun. How old is Mayor Menino? I think he's, what, 65? He is 65. Something like that. See, there's a lot of teams in the Boston uh, area that are pretty good, are really good, actually. So it's really tough to keep up with the players. Uh, I'm trying to defend them, but at the same time, you know. You're just feeling miserably by trying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, like, his sports knowledge must 70, not. 70, by the way, 70 years old. Wow. Well, his sports knowledge must not be there right now, but. Um, <laughs> I don't think it was ever there. <laughs> I don't think, yeah. <laughs> but we were kind of talking, like, before the show that, do you really think that Mayor Menino like does that for real, or is it just like fake? At this point, it's got to be a shtick that he just. I keeps really up, think so. You know, like, Why I not? Think, <laughs> like you, you're on a roll right himself. now. Just keep keep the ball rolling. Like I just don't understand how he can make the same mistake over and over again. At this point, it just feels like it's forced, and he's just finding ways to screw up names and just botch players and things like that. It's just it's hilarious. KJ and Hondo. He's so close to. I just feel bad because he's like. <laughs> I mean, he's get, he's getting old. I know he's not feeling well lately, too. He just needs yeah. a mi- I mean, minor touch on his, his sports knowledge. Really, I think he'll be all right. The the thing <laughs> that, that croaked him was being the mayor of Boston with all the championship teams that we have. If he was somewhere like, I don't know, Jacksonville, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe he wouldn't have to give these sports speeches so much. But I don't know why they keep having him do it. He's, well, he as, long, up as long as we win, we'll see it. You know, He just uh, wants to preach to the, the welcoming people of Boston. Yeah. Yeah, Rob true. Grabowski. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, question number two. Jacoby Ellsbury is about two weeks away from free agency. Are these his last games in a Red Sox uniform, or will he end up re-signing? I think that, uh, I mean, it scares me that they wouldn't re-sign him, but, I mean, you look at uh, Hunter Pence probably is the guy mm. who uh, who they're looking at as, as a breaking point, or, I'm sorry, who Scott Boris would be looking at as as a guy to level Jacob Bielsbury up against, and what's Pence making twenty twenty million per Something year? Something crazy. I can look. I it mean, up. I, I think I think that the Sox 
I, I want to re-sign the guy. I don't think they will because I think that Ellsbury is going to be a little too rich for their blood, and uh, it's going to be unfortunate to see him go. Here's my take. I really think Jacoby Ellsbury will stay if the Red Sox don't win the World Series. If he does, if he do, if they do, is no point in him really staying around. He, you know, he he won a World Series with the Red Sox. I mean, I really feel like money will play a role. But if he wants to stay, he's going to have to avoid Scott Boris's input. And he's just going to have to go with his heart. And he has a fit with the Red Sox right now. And he's just flowing. Why would you want to interrupt that flow that you have going in the routines? And, you know, just the spirit and the belief in this team. And, you know, I just think money shouldn't play a role with him. By the way, uh, Hunter Pence, that was five years, $90 million, Dave. So that's uh, okay. something. And, that's uh, relatively close to Red Sox's ballpark. So it's something like $18 million per he, year? He wanted, I think from what Brian told me off the air a while ago, he said he was looking for five years, seventy five, which is totally yeah, doable. Mil. Yeah. That's totally that's doable. doable if, oh, yeah. uh, if you're looking at Ellsbury. But, yeah. Yeah. but the thing is, with, with Boris, he's... He's a greedy agent, and he usually winds up getting the money that he wants for his players. And uh, sometimes when you're dealing with this guy, it, it doesn't it doesn't go the, the way that you would want it to go as a fan or as a as a part of the managerial team of whatever team that you're dealing with. If if you're dealing with Scott Boris, see, I think it's a, the the other way around. I feel like the players actually. Um, voice their opinion to Scott Boris, and Scott Boris goes and gets that money. Mm -hmm. Because you look at Robinson Cano, he wants, what, $300 million from the next team he signs with? Which probably won't be the... (laughs) Which probably won't be the the Yankees, or probably be the Dodgers, if anything. Uh But, you know, I really think if Jacoby Ellsbury wants a price on his, you know, his tag, uh, I really feel like he's gonna, he's gonna ask Scott Boris for it more than, um, than anything. I... You know, so. All right. Well, there you go. Question number three, guys. Peyton Manning is currently sitting at 25 touchdowns through the first seven games, and he's on pace to surpass Tom Brady's single-season touchdown record by about seven, it looks like. Will he, or will he fall just short? Oh, that's a tough one, because because uh, it gets harder. That's why I had you uh, go towards first. The, <laughs> towards the end of the regular season, you know, and, and it's not like the Broncos don't already have a target on their back. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think as the year goes on, and I'm not 100% sure on the schedule that the Broncos have, you're going to get teams playing a lot tighter against the Broncos. You saw Jacksonville actually stand up to them uh, not long ago, and, and then you, they lost to the Colts this week, and really until the very end of that game, uh, the Broncos' offense couldn't get it going. So I think he will be under Brady's record by the end of the season just because it's going to get tougher as the year goes on. Yeah, I mean, you look at this week, that it, it's going to be tough for him to go up against. Uh, I, I really have faith in the Redskins' defense, but I don't know why I would. But I just like the players that they have on that roster. I really think the Redskins could upset Denver, but I really... I wouldn't say Manning beats Brady. I really wouldn't. You know, Manning has all the weapons around him to do so. But I, you know, the way Brady, um, Brady's Brady's performance when he broke that record was just incredible. It it, it was just you know uh, a highlight in his career, his l- long career. And uh, Manning, he's had everything, and I really think that Manning Manning will do what is best for the team. I feel like, and, you know, Denver Broncos have a complete team with their defense and running game, so I think the running game actually, you know, doesn't help Manning's, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Manning's argument to beat Tom Brady. All right, question number four, guys. The Celtics open the regular season in a little over a week. Will they break the 500 mark this season, or are they going to go into an absolute tailspin and just float into mediocrity forever this season? Uh, I'll take this one first. Uh, I think the... I think the Celtics are going to go 42 and 39. 42 and 39. Okay. But I think they missed miss the playoffs. I can like see your heart breaking over there just just even hearing <laughs> the question mark. I, I think um I don't know. I'm I'm very unbiased when it comes to the Celtics and I think it's a bottom of the barrel type of year for them if they want to do the rebuilding thing, they got to kind of tank it, right? Exactly. Come in, I'm come so in, glad you said that. Come in last place, go out, get your draft pick, rebuild 
be better later. I'm so glad you said that. I absolutely subscribe to the belief that if you are going to blow it up and start from scratch, especially in this scenario where you shipped out so many important cornerstones, you've got to absolutely tank this season. Why try to win 41 games that you probably uh, uh, will sheesh, win? That's kind of cool, but you're not answering questions this week. You're asking well, them. Well, that's true. That's a good <laughs> point, Mark. But uh, Brian's not here, no. so I'm going to answer on his behalf. <laughs> I know no, that. But- Go ahead. It, my, my thing with the Celtics, they have too much talent to be that bad this year. You look at Ron, if Rondo comes back, you're talking Rondo, Avery Bradley, Gerald Wallace, Jared Sollinger, Kelly Olynyk, or yeah. Chris Humphreys, and then you have Marshawn Brooks, and you know Phil Presti may be coming off the bench with um, Brandon Bass. Maybe mm-hmm. I really think Brandon Bass will be a, a good bench player, but I just don't see them actually tanking. You you just can't tank. I want them to tank, but you can't tank. Okay, uh, Mark, I got a follow up question. I want Wiggins. I want Wiggins. Mm-hmm. I want Wiggins over a subpar, yeah. a subpar uh, season. I, I understand that. But, but do what, you, my question to you is: What do you think? First off, what's best case scenario for the Celtics this season with the lineup they got? If they play their hardest and they go for a playoff position this wins. year, and what do you think uh, is actually the Celtics' plan this season? Do you think that they're planning to tank it a little bit? In the back of your mind, I really feel like they need to, they need to, but the I, you got Jeff Green, Avery Bradley, Rondo, you have so much talent on that team. You just not, don't want to give it up. Actually, not to be good, you know. Right. Well, my thing is, all right. Let's let's look at let's look back at uh, two thousand six two thousand seven season. Mm-hmm. They played terrible, right? Mm-hmm. Th- they actually. Didn't get the first pick in the draft. That's why I'm worried. They actually wanted Greg Oden, by the way. <laughs> they wanted Greg Oden, <laughs> which would have been terrible. But my thing is, their their season, their season. You just can't tank. You know, it, it's it's unbearable for them to tank. All right. Before we move on to question five, I just want to finish my point before Mark so rudely cut me off. <laughs> is that Mark? You have to tank. You look at the draft next year. It's being compared to the 2003 draft. We all know the names that came out of that draft. You want to be a lottery uh, team and get one of those high draft picks because if you make how, the playoffs, how do you tank, Ashish? Uh, just delay Rondo's return. Play like you know, crap. Yeah, play like crap. Find ways. You know, it starts with the GM. It doesn't go to Brad Stevens, the head coach. So we'll see. But I, I think that that's what they should do. You're uh, not. You're gonna make the playoffs, squeak in as a seventh or eighth seed, and get swept in the first round by Miami. So that doesn't make any sense. Now we are a minute away from break, so quickly, guys. And, and they got those. Five. They got those first round picks for reasons. So. Exactly, they did. So they All can right. stack up. I can't take back. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five, guys. Before the break. We are up against Halloween in what, like eight days? Yep. yep Favorite right. horror movie? Oh my gosh. <sighs> Top of my head. Um, you know what? I, I'm going classic with A Nightmare on Elm Street. I know, uh, you, I know you said you didn't like A Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm just trying to think through. Recently, I'm going Cabin in the Woods, actually. Changing my answer because I thought that movie was funny and scary, and it was one of the most entertaining recent horror movies I've seen. There's not a lot of good ones out. Yeah, there's really not... A lot of good uh, horror movies, and I can't really put my mind to one. Um, I'm thinking Halloween. Halloween. Just because <laughs> Hall- Halloween is Halloween, and <laughs> nothing <laughs> scares you more than Michael Myers. There it is. <laughs> that's that's definitely a good pick as well. Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, all of those classics. Michael Myers, baby. That's what I'm going for, Halloween. The, I love the that original style. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that either. That was awful. <laughs> all right. Okay, that is five questions. We are going to be right back with another segment called That's BS. A lot of fun right here on the Sports Blast 1460 WXBR.